Here comes Butterbean in. Good right hand, left hand down. Eric Butterbean, fearlessly determined and relentless. Oh, beautiful. Oh, boy. Over here. First knockdown. Oh, left right. He goes down. Today you will see fighters that were not the same anymore after fighting the king of four rounders. Let the action begin. Witness the extraordinary power of Eric Butterbean in the ring. Let the ruthless fight unfold. And hang on to your hats. Here we go. Eric Butterbean faced off against the man with an impressive mullet, George Clark. From the start, Esch made it clear that he meant business. When George attempted an attack and then took a moment to rest in the clinch, Butterbean wasted no time and swiftly retaliated with an excellent right hook, catching Clark off guard. Dazed George resorted to his high school instincts and tried a double leg takedown. However, standing back up, he found himself facing Butterbean, who charged at him like a fierce Iberian bull. Down goes Clark for the second time. In the ensuing brawl, Butterbean's punches were like high-tech rocket launchers, striking George's body and then targeting the same spot on his head that dropped Clark previously. Unfazed, Butterbean continued to advance like an American gangster, hands down but exuding confidence. He delivered four powerful mallet-like punches to George's mullet, sending Clark down and out of the ring. He means business tonight. Good right hand by Butterbean. Clark trying to fight back. That's it. Clark is down and with three knockdowns in a single round, the fight came to an abrupt end. That was quite a flurry. Here comes. In this matchup, an undefeated 6-0 Kurt, the hurt Allen proved he was no pawn in the game. He entered the ring determined to maintain his unbeaten streak and establish himself as a formidable heavyweight. There, so they found one Kurt displayed a lack of telegraphing in his shots firing punches from a distance while Butterbean tried to launch his own attacks. He does have heavy hands. Like George Foreman, he knocks... Allen utilized his footwork to evade Butterbean's punches, and both fighters struggled to gain an advantage. Butterbean was struggling with distance management, and although Kurt was landing punches, they didn't seem to have much effect on Iash. Maybe not quite as badly as a bee. In a desperate attempt to find openings, Butterbean inadvertently stepped on Allen's foot, causing him to lose his balance and fall to the ground. The round went to Kurt the Hurt, and it seemed like his nickname didn't quite suit him in this fight. However, in between rounds, Butterbean's corner advised him to throw more punches, and he put more pressure. With an increased volume of punches, Butterbean started to gain momentum. Allen's in-and-out fighting style changed as he struggled to keep up with Butterbean's higher punch-out. I wish you guys would quit giggling like that because I get a lot of letters every time you do it. Okay. <laughs> the second round was clearly taken by Butterbean, although there were no knockdowns. Ooh, hard right hand and Allen... As the third round began, Allen attempted to float like a butterfly as he did in the first. Butterbean smiled widely as if... However, Butterbean closed the distance and landed a heavy hook, shaking Kurt. Ooh. The right hand lands for Butterbean. It was a telling sign that Butterbean had cracked the code to Allen's defense, and the end was near. Butterbean unleashed a powerful overhand, missing the first time but landing it on the second attempt, severely hurting oh, Kurt. Right again, and now Allen is stunned. Eric Butterbean continued to pummel Allen with relentless shots, and with just 10 seconds remaining in the round, the referee stepped in to call the stoppage. Butterbean secured the victory, breaking Kurt the Hurt's hope of maintaining a flawless record and solidifying his own title as the dominant force in the ring. In the next fight, Butterbean met Ken Woods. From the beginning, it was clear that Ken was fidgeting around with his awkward movement. However, Butterbean put all his weight into that jab and rocked Ken Woods. Oh, good left by Butterbean. Ken's confusing style of fighting seemed to work against Eric Esch as he evaded punches by constantly moving to the left. But he would pay a big price for that mistake. An experienced Butterbean quickly schooled and humbled Ken, who was trying to invent something new. Eric had to adjust his punches trajectory according to Wood's movement. And then came the massive, crushing overhands that turned Ken Wood's brain into a nutritious porridge for worms to eat. Oh, right, he goes down. 
He would never be the same after taking that thunderous shot. In the matchup between Butterbean and Troy Roberts, both fighters had distinctive body shapes, with Butterbean being 180 degrees different from Roberts. Both athletes proudly displayed flags on their shorts. As the fight commenced, they engaged in an intense exchange, throwing powerful punches to establish their dominance. You are right. Roberts. In the first round, Roberts showcased his skills by delivering jabs and employing head movement to evade Butterbean's attacks, making it a good round for him. However, in the second round, Butterbean unleashed a barrage of ferocious punches, rocking Troy Roberts. As the third round began, Butterbean went all in, no longer holding back. He repeatedly connected with overhand shots, finding his target. Despite Troy's resilience, Butterbean relentlessly pressed on, applying immense pressure until the fight reached its conclusion. Working in the factory, Butterbean received a suggestion to participate in a Toughman competition. Like fighters from the old days, he didn't want to waste any time on extensive preparation. He was ready to go from the very start. As the fight began, Ash appeared more composed and in better shape, but Copeland remained undeterred, relentlessly pushing forward, hoping for a lucky break. However, he was swiftly humbled after Butterbean landed a clean combination. With another powerful exchange, Butterbean emerged as the victor. The referee gave Copeland an eight count, but just as they closed in on each other again, Butterbean surprised him with a single jab that dazed him. The round came to an end, and it was evident that the fight was close to its conclusion. In the second round, Butterbean continued to work Copeland's body and head, overwhelming his semi-functioning defenses. Though Esk landed significant blows, Copeland refused to back down, signaling his determination to continue and the damage he took. However, at this point, it was clear that the fight needed to be stopped. The title fight for the iBay Championship, lasting four rounds, appeared tailor-made for Butterbean, who seemed destined to claim the crown. His opponent, Tim Burgoon, was equally determined to secure the vacant super heavyweight title for himself. It was evident that Butterbean was setting a trap for his opponent. Team Burgoon started the fight cautiously, exhibiting a somewhat reserved approach. Butterbean cleverly goaded him by presenting openings, attempting to provoke Tim into striking. As the first round unfolded, it became apparent that Butterbean was ready to unleash an all-out assault. He charged forward, landing powerful blows, and towards the end of one attack, Tim found himself trapped against the ropes. However, Butterbean chose not to seize that opportunity to end the fight prematurely. In the final round, Butterbean initiated a fierce blitz of attacks, overwhelming Tim with his relentless power and skill. Tim struggled to regain his footing after the onslaught and couldn't stand back up in time, leading to Butterbean securing the victory and solidifying his title as the king of the four rounds. In the intense bout between Butterbean and Son Jijin, the action began with Jijin, feeling the impact of a lightning-fast left punch from Butterbean, which was immediately followed by a powerful right that left him wobble. Two fighters' bodies. Butterbean's punches were undeniably potent, and each one seemed to take its toll on Jijin's brain. At one point in the fight, Jigen found himself pushed against the ropes, and as he bounced off, Butterbean, displaying his versatility, executed a wrestling-like move, met him with a perfectly timed left hook, 
Following that, Butterbean, with the agility of a seasoned wrestler, delivered two more clean hooks, causing Jijin to stagger. Out of Overland Park, Kansas, and he may want to take the first plane back to Kansas. As the punches continued to rain down on Jigen, Butterbean unleashed three more crushing hooks, each one carrying tremendous force. The combination of these powerful punches proved to be overwhelming for Sean Jigen. Unable to withstand the onslaught, Jigen was unable to stand up after the barrage of punches from Butterbean. Here comes Butterbean in. Good right hand, left hand, down to the right hand of the head. Combination left and right, down. The tension in the air was palpable as Butterbean locked eyes with his opponent, his determination evident. Lindecker kept the pressure on, going in out with his punches, trying to find a way to break through Butterbean's defenses. However, it was as if Butterbean ate those punches like they were nothing, displaying an iron chin and seemingly impervious to Lindecker's onslaught. As the fight progressed, Butterbean's confidence grew, and he patiently waited for the right moment. However, Butterbean was relentless and threw the same hand again, this time connecting with Scott's head, sending him to the canvas. Right hand puts Lindecker down. I guess not. The fight was reaching its climax, and Butterbean saw an opportunity to finish it, but time was running short. In the second round, Lindecker continued. He went back to his original strategy, using clinches to avoid getting hit and trying to fire back with his long-reaching punches, giving it his all, trying to find openings in Butterbean's defense. However, Butterbean threw a lot of punches to the body inside the clinch. The round ended in Lindecker's favor, and Butterbean's corner advised him to work on combinations to seize control. Lindecker looked gassed. Despite the exhaustion, Lindecker fought valiantly and managed to survive the third round, still employing his in-and-out tactics, but this time doing it way slower he couldn't break through Butterbean's defenses to make a significant impact on the fight throughout the match. Butterbean continued to absorb Lindecker's punches with little effect, and he kept pounding the core of his opponent. In a pivotal moment, Butterbean landed another heavy punch, this time breaking Scott's ribs, leaving Lindecker looking completely gassed and resorting to frequent clinching. Butterbean couldn't help but feel frustrated with Lindecker's tactics, believing he was not fighting him like a man. In a lightning quick motion, Butterbean's right hand met Lindecker's face, delivering a mean blow that left a lasting impression on the fight. Down goes Lindecker. Sometimes the shortest punches are the best. And you can't be any more gangly. The fear of the unknown can be daunting, but nothing compares to the bone chilling terror of knowing exactly what's coming your way with no escape in sight. That's exactly what Butterbean was doing to his opponent. If you like to see more brutal fighters, hit the like button, and we will continue producing the top content for you. Left chin, left side of